All right. Nice to see you again. Got another adventure today, going down into the swamps to look for spiders and insects and reptiles and amphibians and aliens and whatever else we can find. told you this wouldn't take long we're already there I'll show you around uh, and then we'll uh, take some pictures and while while I'm doing that I'll explain to you how I uh, how I do my macro lighting let's go have a look <music> purpose of today's video is to talk about exposure and certainly on a day like today much of the time for your macro photography exposure is not actually going to be that big an issue but what about what about when your your insect or your snake or your frog goes into the shade goes under a, a log or under a leaf and all of a sudden you don't have enough light not without either opening up golf oh, or crying out loud Hush, you hear that noise? That's birds, seriously. They're having an argument, geese. They, they've been following me around. Look, I'll show them to you. Feels like I'm in an Alfred Hitchcock movie all of a sudden. Anyway, if I can hear myself think, I was just saying, on a nice, pretty day like this, where there's loads of sun, most of your photography can be done with the available light. And that includes macro. While there might be tons of, of usable light, it's not always going to help you when you're in very tight quarters with, uh, uh, with your subject. So now a gigantic industrial strength lawnmower has has come into this neck of the woods hopefully to mow down the geese but probably not probably just uh, he's mowing the mud right now if you don't believe that there he is mowing the mud I might just have to go sit in my car to tell you the rest of this stuff oh this is this is insane the lawnmower guy is re-mowing the same bit of mud. The geese have called in reinforcements. And now there's a four-year-old child running around trying to catch the geese. I can't hear myself think. <sighs> well, a busload of uh, ladies with uh, children showed up at my quiet spot and that was just too much. Could not hear myself think. So I thought, better cut my losses and come somewhere really quiet uh, before the brass band arrives, which I have no doubt they will. So anyway, what were we talking about? Exposure. Right, so, you know, beautiful sunny day like this, you might be wondering, well, exposure shouldn't be a problem. We've got plenty of light and uh, yeah, uh, for, for many of your shots you probably will but a great many of our of the subjects we go after in macro photography don't don't hang about in the sun I don't know if they they're afraid of skin cancer or what it is but they'd rather be under a log or on the bottom side of a leaf and so on so you're faced with a dilemma 
Uh, you can't really uh, muck around with your ISO too much, not if you're going to be printing pictures um, like I like to do. Uh, you really want to, to try and keep your ISO as low as possible. So there's problem number one. Problem number two is uh, you can open up your aperture, certainly, um, but when you do that, you sacrifice depth of field. So there's problem number two. Problem number three, of course, is shutter speed. Uh, we're dealing with things that are constantly moving and jumping and flapping their wings and carrying on. So we don't really have the luxury of slowing down our shutter speed, which would have been another option because, you know, you slow down the, the shutter speed and more light will get in your camera and you can get the photograph that way. So we're stuck. We can't do any of the things that we would normally think to do uh, to, uh, to shoot in low light situations and a lot of our subjects, like I say, are going to be in low light situations. So what are our options? You can certainly use reflectors to, to shine light into your, uh, your cranny. That didn't sound right. Um, you can certainly uh, use reflectors to get light into those hard to reach places. <laughs> <laughs> hard to reach places uh, but uh, that has a tendency to uh, there's a uh, there's an alligator in the water I'm not falling for that again anyway sorry I lost my composure there for a second let's get back to what I was saying so you can use reflectors um, just white cards foil or a piece of glass it tends to scare off your insect and it, it, can, it, makes, it makes getting your exposure right very difficult sometimes, but it's an option. You can, you can move the, uh, uh, your subject into the light, but I generally don't really approve of that. I, I, like, to, I like to shoot my subjects where I find them. Uh, so we're left with, with really having to add artificial light. Uh, continuous light. Yeah, some people do that. They certainly make uh, ring lights. These are not ring flashes now. These are just LED ring lights that attach to the uh, front of your, your lens. Generally speaking, not crazy about them either, to be honest. Maybe if I'm doing some macro video, that might be, that might be a reasonable uh, option to play around with. But uh, most of the time we're left using a, a static flash of some kind and as with any flash um, we can uh, we can use it in several different ways I like to think of it as there being uh, three different ways or did I just hold up four fingers there are several different ways of um, of using a flash we can use the flash on the camera the pop-up flash we'll be crossing that one off the list shortly but we can use a speed light on the camera, another option. We can use a speed light or a group of speed lights on the lens, which is another good option. Or we can use our artificial lighting, one or more speed lights completely off the camera and lens. So, so they're the options that we have. So we'll walk through the various ways that you can uh, use the flash uh, and I'll then explain to you why my favorite method is to use an on-camera flash with a little angled uh, clamp and a uh, diffuser panel. And I'll show you how, how that works. I'm gonna get away from that possible alligator. So all I was looking for was a nice quiet place to sit down in the shade, out of the sun, out of the wind, so I could finish this video before I'm put on forced retirement. And I found this tree, looked perfect. Plonked myself down with my gear and plonked right back up again. I think I've now got a hernia. Won't show you that though. Ah, oh, motorbike. I should have guessed. Well, the wind's blowing something vicious now, and I had to I had to hide that puffy microphone thing down inside my shirt. So any noises you hear are not coming from my body. It's just the the way the microphone is. Anyhow, pop-up flash pretty useless. 
even if your, your subject is far enough away from the end of the lens for you to be able to get light on it, the, the light from uh, that single small light source is very harsh. Uh, it makes unpleasant specular highlights and it makes your images look really flat. Uh, so generally speaking, I say don't bother with that. The second way would be to take a, uh, a speed light. Just, this is a, a, one of those cheap uh, $65 um, imported jobs uh, that I love. I think they're, they're perfectly good. They recycle fast. Uh, they're very powerful. Uh, they're just great all around speed lights and they cost you know, hundreds of dollars less than, uh, than the Nikon and Canon ones. And, and what you can do with this is just, of course, like you normally would for any other kind of photography, you can slide it onto your camera like so. And that, it, that is a little better than, uh, than, than using the pop-up flash, but only a little bit. You can use this, the bits that come attached to this, like the, I don't have a fingernail. It has a little diffuser thing and a little white plasticky thing for bouncing the light. And that also uh, gives you a little bit more control over the light, but you still get getting a very flat, two dimensional looking photograph and uh, it's very glary. So generally speaking, this alone uh, is not what I would choose. Now, the third option that I suggested was mounting your camera, uh, mounting your lighting system on the lens of the camera. A whole bunch of different companies make these, um, make these ring flashes that actually attach directly onto your, onto your filter ring on your camera. And they have a, a, you put an adapter ring on there and then the flash mounts on the front. And it either has a, a, a single flash tube all the way around or it has one flash tube on either side. And some of the really expensive ones from, from Nikon and, and Canon has, uh, has places that you can attach individual uh, wirelessly controlled speed lights. Very low power SB200 type speed lights. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic way to do your lighting, but they cost a thousand dollars or thereabouts. They're incredibly fidgety. Uh, they're a little bit plasticky and they don't have any good way of, uh, of diffusing the light. They say they do. They have these little plastic things that go over the end of uh, each of the little speed lights. But honestly, they don't do a, a, a very good job. And for the money, uh, I would steer clear of them. So all of those methods are to a greater or lesser extent useful and I've used all of them. Uh, I still use some of them. But for my daily solution, the, the, if I'm gonna go out just for fun to do some macro shooting and I'm, I'm just trying to give myself the maximum amount of flexibility, uh, the solution that will work under any circumstance uh, I use this method. Now, I don't uh, claim this method is mine. I've seen several other uh, uh, macro photographers using this. Um, I honestly don't know where it came from or who thought it up first. I'm just telling you it wasn't me. Um, but he here's what I do. Instead of attaching the, f the speed light directly to the camera like this, I instead attach a a little bracket thing. This is actually three pieces. This is a PC sink for the hot shoe. The second part is this angled bendy thing that, that screws to lock and then screws to unlock and it allows you to, to keep it at an angle. The third thing is just this little um, uh, cold shoe that uh, I got at Adorama for a dollar or two that fits onto the top. So we've got all three of those pieces connected. So once those three parts are connected, I simply mount it on the hot shoe of my camera. And, and this bottom piece does of course have a contact with the camera. So this will be able to communicate the, the flash signal to my speed light. And then the last thing I do is mount the speed light 
to the top of the bracket, like so. And you can see this allows me to angle the speed light right down in front of the uh, in front of the lens of the camera, well within the working distance. Now, that's not quite everything, because uh, when you do that, you're still getting a lot of bright, uh, direct flash on it. Even if you use the little diffuser panel, which really doesn't work, um, there's, a, there's a better way. And that better way involves the thing that's down the back of my trousers, this. Unfortunately, it's all bent and folded now because it kept blowing away. Uh, I'll have to make another one, but that's the beauty of these. They cost nothing. You can make them at home with tracing paper and um, that plasticky stuff you uh, stick onto paper so it won't get wet. Um, laminating plastic, there you go. Both sides, bit of laminating plastic, and then tracing paper in the middle. And what you do is you attach one end of it to your speed light. It, this is gonna be hopeless uh, because of the wind. It's just gonna blow away. One end to the end of the speed light, and then the other end clips around the lens. I'm not even going to try to show it to you because this now forms a sail and uh, it will just blow off into the lake if I let go of it. So here's some pictures of what it looks like when it's all assembled. The beauty of this is you get soft diffused light that gives a great three dimensionality to, to your insects. It gives uh, lovely catch lights if they're shiny insects, as many of them are. It doesn't give those ugly um, uh, semi-circular uh, catch lights that you get from the ring flash. It gives a nice uh, uh, rectangular, not rectangular, what do you call it? Like a parallelogram. So the other thing that I really love about, about this system is its versatility. It's cheapness, it's super easy to throw together, and it works in just about any circumstances. And while this works about 90% of the time on windy days like today, Sometimes I'll use one of these miniature folding soft boxes that I just attach to the end of the speed light. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you uh, watching it. And uh, I'd be very grateful if you give me a thumbs up or a comment or subscribe to the channel if you heard anything that you liked. Uh, I'll be back in a few more days with another video. This one's going to be on uh, photographing snakes, I think. Uh, so that'll be something to look forward to. In the meantime, uh, go over and check out my website, Alan Walls Photography. There's a blog over there and several other things that might be uh, interesting. Uh, it's all free and it's all photography, so there should be something there you, you'll enjoy. Uh, so until I see you again in the near future, uh, get out there, take lots of good pictures, have a great deal of fun, and stay safe. Cheerio now.